Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're continuing on with our Symphony 4 introduction. Specifically in this video we'll be looking at Symphony services. So throughout this short series we've referred back to a few times to the Symphony best practices. And before going any further I want to say that in my opinion the best practices are like rules, they're like guidelines. Now rules and best practices can be bent or broken but adhering to them in the vast majority of cases will make you and your fellow teammates lives that much easier at least most of the time so i want to start with a change that we've made in both our contact controller and our welcome controller and one that i recommended that you make in any controller that you create and that is that we extend the abstract controller now i kind of touched on why we do this but it becomes more obvious when dealing with services so Symphony can be quite a mysterious beast. As consumers of the framework, we get access to the wisdom and the benefit of code created and also crucially peer reviewed by some of the smartest developers writing PHP code today. For this reason and many more, I'm sure you'll all join me in saying a massive thank you to everyone involved in the Symphony community. Now thinking about this, it's implicit that we trust these developers to do smart things on our behalf. Now it doesn't necessarily follow that we understand why they do the things that they do it also doesn't mean that everything that they do will directly benefit us now as a side note this is part of the downside of using a framework whilst we do get given all this good stuff that we do need we also potentially get a lot of extra stuff that we don't that's why symphony 4 originally came with just the symphony skeleton the suggestion is that we only install the bits that we want but as beginners that makes our lives that much harder sometimes we just want a good set of defaults and we compromise that perhaps we get a little bit of extra bloat by way of extra dependencies that we won't use but we're happy to pay that small price now you may be wondering what all of this has to do with abstract controller specifically so a big push in symphony 3 was to get auto wiring and auto configuration added now whether you have an opinion on these or not that's just the way things have gone now controllers are now services by default and they do have some special configuration so if we look inside services yaml we can see there is this extra section specific to controllers now this likely brings many more benefits than directly affect me as a consumer of the framework but let me cover the part that i most appreciate now, as I've mentioned a few times in this short series already, there are a few times when there's multiple ways to achieve one outcome. And sometimes this is good, you know, it gives us increased flexibility and the ease of being able to roll our own is a big selling point. Other times though, it could just make our code accidentally worse, but we're still within the rules. An example of this would be in using both parameters and services. And this is more of a problem with a Symphony 3 or a Symphony 2 application. So even though we're still inside the same project, I've kind of replicated what the old style would look like. It looks very similar to what we've covered in Symphony 4, but pretend that we're in the app bundle, for example. Now, if not, if this doesn't make sense to you, then don't worry about this. It's just to cover the sort of the old way of doing stuff. So you'd have to imagine that some service exists. Of course it doesn't, but I've just had to fake it. And we've not got the appropriate use statement at the top there. But yeah, as I say, just bear with me on this. So I'm not saying that this is good code and I'm not saying that this is bad code, but it is technically valid code. We're injecting one thing, which is our some service, and then we're asking for another. So we're going off to the container and we're saying, hey, can you get me this parameter that I've created somewhere? And it's saying, yes, no problem. And then, you know, we're using that parameter in some way. Now, of course, you would probably inject the parameter into the service and whatnot. But as I say, that's not really what this is about. It's just to illustrate that in a controller action in Symphony 2 and Symphony 3, you could inject stuff, but you could also ask for stuff. So generally, where there's multiple ways of doing one thing, it's best if you choose one way of doing it and you stick to it. And my suggestion to you is to tell, don't ask. Symphony suggests injection, which would fall under tell, by the way. You can also inject parameters, but there is a little bit of extra work required. Okay, so seeing stuff in the context of Symphony 2 or Symphony 3 is useful, but let's get back to our project and see a real example of this. And then we'll come back to that and take a look at it after we've seen how this works. We'll start out by adding in our own custom parameter. So we'll go under our services and under parameters, we'll add in a new one. We'll just call it app dot whatever. I'm going to call it my sweet param. And we'll just say nerding out on Symphony is fun because it is. So before we can use this parameter in one of our services, we need to create ourselves a service. 
So as we're dealing with emails, it makes sense to me at least to create ourselves a mailer. So I'm going to create a new directory called mailer and I'm going to have in there a new class called emailer.php. I'll start off by putting this in the namespace of app mailer and it's going to have the class of emailer. Now looking at our controller code for our contact controller method, there's two things that we need to do. The first is we need to create a new instance of a Swift message. And the second is we then need to send that Swift message via the mailers send method. So we could get really complex with this code. We could try and abstract it out to some crazy level, but I'm going to keep things as simple as possible until we need to get more complicated. So as we've said, there's really two actions that are happening here. There's the concept of creating a message and then there's the concept of sending a message. So in my email, I'm going to start off by creating a public function, which is called create. And we know from this create function here that we're going to return a new Swift message instance. So I'm going to use a PHP 7 feature here and set the return type to be of type Swift message. Now we don't need a use statement because Swift message is actually in the root namespace indicated by that slash. That's kind of unusual. Normally you would have the use statement, but yeah, it's just the way that Swift message and Swift mailer are set up. Now before worrying about that create method, let's start using this service and let's inject our parameter. And to inject the parameter, there are, as ever, multiple ways that we could do this. We could do it by a setter injection, but we primarily would do this by a constructor injection. And if you don't really understand that, don't worry about it. In most cases, you're going to be doing this by a constructor injection, which just means first we need to declare a constructor for our class, and then we need to tell it what to inject. So our parameter is going to be a simple string, and it's called my sweet param. So I'll just call it my sweet param and then just escape there to stop PHP storm from trying to do anything funky and then alt return on it initialize the fields and there we go we're all set up now symphony can't figure out what my sweet param is firstly it doesn't tie up directly to app.mysweetparam and even if it did even if we just removed app dot from this and then just use my sweet param symphony still not going to be able to figure out that you want that specific parameter because that's the variable name that you've used and if you did if it did should i say then that would be kind of weird anyway so we do need to be a little bit more explicit about this but it's really not that difficult all the same what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into services yaml and we're going to define our own service so our service lives at app mailer and it's called the emailer that's just the fully qualified class name and all we need to do is tell it what the arguments are. So we've only got one argument, it's on my sweet param, which I thought there was in my clipboard, but it's clearly not. So dollar my sweet param is equal to our parameter. And for parameters in Symphony, we use double percentage like that as percentage at the start, percentage at the end. I want to say app my sweet param. Now, unusually it's lowercase that, and I'm not entirely sure that's correct. So I'm just going to switch it back to be as I expect it to be. I think that might be a bug in the plugin. Now, if you were injecting other services here, maybe you wanted the logger. So let's also pass in the logger and we just need to say at because it's a service logger because that's the service name. And you can also use, say for example, you had a different service that you, I'm just gonna make one up. So we'll just say some service. And then we had another service defined, uh, say app service, some service then that would also be valid. Now it's coming up here as saying that that's not a real thing because it's not, we've just invented it. But say we did have these three, so we'd have a logger and some service, then what we need to do is go into our emailer and we need to say, you know, we've just said the second parameter is going to be our logger and the third parameter in this case would be some service, which doesn't exist, but some service like that. As long as the variable names match up to whatever we've defined as our arguments, then we are good to go. I'm going to get rid of that one, but I might as well leave the logger in because, you know, why not? It's a legitimate thing. We, we could use it. And as I've added that in again, alt and return, initialize those fields just because I'm lazy. Now there's something else that's interesting going on here. You may have just been wondering how on earth can we inject an interface? So an interface could be anything, any implementation of logger interface, as you can see is the PSR logger interface. It could be any implementation of logger interface. It just so happens that Symfony has a default implementation of logger interface, which is monolog. So if there is no other configured implementation, Symfony is clever enough to fall back to the default. So in this case, if we inject logger interface, then Symfony is going to inject the monolog logger service for us. Okay. Anyway, let's visually validate what's going on here. So I'm going to use the logger to just log out a couple of things. So we'll say, in fact, we don't need to use this. We can just directly access logger and we'll just 
alert out something like boom and we'll also use the logger to debug my sweet param and then we'll also dump out my sweet param just to show the variety of things that you can do now typically doing stuff like this in a constructor is not a good idea but for the purposes of debugging and demonstration it should be good enough this also gives us the opportunity to take a look at the logs so i'm just going to do a tail minus f against var log dev.log there's stuff already happening in there so whilst i'm not entirely sure this will work on a mac we can try it sudo truncate size zero var log dev.log ah, i think i just need to use dash s to set the size to zero okay so truncate just basically flattens a file i think i had to install that using homebrew as well just as a heads up uh, you don't need to do that anyway but yeah i'm going to just tail that var dev log and now you can see there's nothing in there which means when we next send something in the only stuff that we should see is the stuff that's relevant to what we're trying to do now if we go back to our app and we just give it a refresh well that's moaning about my example support controller i thought it might do that uh, anyway it's because we're in app bundle let's get rid of that this should satisfy that yeah don't worry about that anyway the interesting thing here is that we don't see anything to do with what we've just done and that's quite an interesting thing in as much as just because we've created this service we've defined a new service not not that one just because we've defined this email a service doesn't mean that it's just going to get nude up every single time we access a controller action if you think about it if we had a thousand services in our project or a hundred or whatever if every time we hit a controller action, Symphony behind the scenes nude up every single thing that it might possibly need, can you imagine how long anything would take to get done? So instead, stuff is only instantiated when it's needed. So in other words, we need to trick Th Symphony into thinking that we do need our mailer. So from our contact controller, what I'm going to do is simply inject it, but not use it. So we'll just inject the emailer, and we'll let service auto wiring figure out where to get all this stuff from we don't need to do any service configuration anymore so if you're coming from symphony 2 symphony 3 this is like a big big thing really as long as you follow the right conventions symphony is going to be able to do quite a lot of the service stuff for you so let's now refresh and you can see our debug toolbar is now showing the dumped output from that construct statement it says nerding out symphony is fun and that's because again that's exactly what we dumped here and we should be able to see alert boom and debug in our logs so alert boom and their debug as well so again all very interesting but you may be wondering what any of it has to do with abstract controller well we know now that we don't need to ask the container for our parameters we can inject them so if we don't need to ask for things from the container then we don't really need to be container aware anymore and that becomes interesting because when we generated each of these controller actions and we saw so if we just open up abstract controller but what we saw was that by default this would actually extend controller so controller uses the controller aware trait and the controller trait abstract controller simply uses the controller trait but we don't need to be container aware anymore because now we're injecting everything including parameters Therefore, if we switch to just using abstract controller like we have done throughout all our examples, then we get essentially exactly the same functionality, but we remove the ability for us to do two things. We can't both tell and ask. So yes, it is more restrictive, but it does have your best interests in mind, even if you didn't know it. So whilst I completely appreciate that in a beginner's tutorial series, this one may have been quite confusing, what I was hoping to show you in this video is that by using Symfony, we're actually being forced into being better developers, even if sometimes it feels like our lives have been made harder. What we're actually getting is the collective benefit and wisdom of some very, very intelligent people.